This week on The Truth, Billy sheds a little light on the spiritual side of miracles. The book of Ephesians tells us to be prepared for spiritual warfare. When we feel we are in need of a miracle, we have to use spiritual discernment. We have to recognize that Satan wants to destroy your blessing. And remember, the Holy Spirit wants to give you faith. Remember, Father God is looking to bless you more than you want blessing. The truth is, God is at work in the spiritual side of miracles. How many of you believe that God can give you a miracle? Raise your hand. Now, truthfully, okay, raise your hand. Okay, now watch this. Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, since we have a great high priest, who's that? Jesus, okay? Who has ascended into heaven. Now, notice what he says here. Watch this. He calls Jesus high priest, which means the boss. Okay? And then he gives authority to him, says he's ascended in heaven, which means he controls the universe. So people in the New and Old Testament, when they read high priest, boss, heaven, all of authority. Jesus, the Son of God. Then he smacks us with this. Jesus. Who? The Son of God. You can't get any higher. I mean, next to Father God, that's it. Okay, so he starts off with these, these incredible illustrations. Jesus, high priest. Jesus in heaven. Jesus, Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. God gives miracles because of faith. Did you hear this? God loves faith. God cherishes faith. God moves mountains because of faith. And if there's anything that God could have chosen that's harder, I don't know what it is. Faith is so hard. Faith is believing and receiving in things that you haven't seen and you're just reaching out by faith. It's not I bought it or I own it or I work for it. It's faith. Looking for more information about Church on the Queensway? Well, check us out online at thechurch.to. There you can find sermon videos, event updates, and so much more. We'd love for you to follow us on Facebook where you can stay connected with live updates, sermon videos, and event information. To like our page on Facebook, simply go to facebook.com slash thechurch.to. We hope you find out more information and get connected to Church on the Queensway. Okay, now watch this. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us, that's my preacher's voice, let us, you're supposed to say amen right there when I do that. Okay, oh, come on, people. Let us. Amen. Oh, come on. You're supposed to. Amen. Yeah, okay, here we go. Let us. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a towel. Let us. Amen. Some of you are so white. <laughs> Let us then approach God's throne. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. What's grace means? Unmerited favor. You and I don't deserve it, but he's going to give it. It's like going to the green machine and putting our card in, and we don't have any money in the bank, but we can pull out a haul. Isn't that right? Grace. Unmerited. What's grace? G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Let us approach God's throne with grace, with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. What does that say? He, the high priest in heaven, wants to give you miracles. Number one, spiritual warfare. All of hell does not want you to have a miracle. Now, I'm going to say that too again because some of you don't understand this. The principalities of evil, the powers of darkness, Satan, the demons, everything, they do not want you to have a miracle. They do not want you to have a miracle at all. 
And what it says in Ephesians 6, 10, finally be strong in the Lord and what? In his mighty power. What is mighty power? It means the miraculous working power of God. When I was saved, that's a miracle. When, when, I, when he took away my sins, it's a miracle. But there's healing. There's deliverance in this room today. Okay? And what does Paul say to the church in Ephesus? Be strong in the Lord. That's great. And also in his mighty power. And this is where the church is missing it today. Oh, a lot of churches. We're strong in the Lord. We read, we pray, we, we witness. But where is the power of God? Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not in flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, you will stand. Now watch this spiritual warfare. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, we have or they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments. We demolish every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Listen to me carefully. There are two spiritual powers in this room, God and the power of hell. Hell is putting arguments in your head even before you came here this morning. For some of you, you're not going to get a miracle. Hell is putting in your th head this morning, miracles happen to everybody else but you. And what does Paul say in 2 Corinthians? He says, you demolish those arguments. You demolish those imaginations. You demolish the pretension, the idols that sets itself up. And you bring every thought under the captivity of Christ. Looking for information about Church on the Queensway? Then visit us online at www.thechurch.to. It's a great place to make online donations, view sermon videos, and get news about upcoming events. That's all online at thechurch.to. I just had somebody come up to my office in between services. A person comes in my office and says, you won't believe this. I said, go ahead, test me. A person said, I, I, I went forward in the last service and got anointed with oil to heal my knee. And I was standing there and nothing happened. I went back to my seat and in my head, my head just became full of Nothing's going to happen to you. And he said, as I stood there just worshiping Jesus, all of a sudden my hands were up and I just felt tingling all over me. And he says, all of a sudden, he said, I just felt cold come all over me. And he says, as I was standing there, he says, all of a sudden, I, I have no idea. I thought the air conditioning had just come on. And, and, and I'm looking around trying to figure out what is happening to me. And I'm looking at my arm. My left arm's got goosebumps on it, but my right arm doesn't. And he says, nobody knew this this morning, but he said a few days ago, he said, I pulled my arm out, dislocated my shoulder and my elbow. And he said, I've been in incredible pain, but I went forward for my knee. And he says, all of a sudden, God snapped my arm and I have no more pain in my arm. He said, it was so bad yesterday, I had to take medicine in order to control the pain. He said, do you know, he said, Honestly, he says, you were talking about miracles, but he says, I thought, no, I'm not going to get one. He says, it's those arguments, those imaginations. Do you, do you know, some of you got this argument, I'm not worthy. That's grace. You are. Some of you say, well, I don't have enough faith. You got enough faith to be here this morning. That's mustard seed. Let it grow. See, what, what the Bible says is we demolish. Now, let me take you to number two on this is this. We're going to move fast. Spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment is where, where we get the thoughts of Christ. Not the arguments of the world. The other night, I couldn't sleep. And, 
and, and, and it's three o'clock in the morning when I can't sleep, I go downstairs and turn on TV and try to find weird preachers. And they're always on at three o'clock in the morning, all, all the weird ones. And this guy, he's on and, and he's, you know, he's got hand, uh, what do you call those, uh, shirt with handcuffs in them, what, what are, cufflinks, whatever they're called, I don't know. And he, he, he's got this suit on that's, you know, like, my goodness. And he goes, I drive a Rolls Royce for Jesus. All men of God should drive Rolls Royces. And I'm believing in my heart right now, if you send me a gift. And he told how much. He says, I believe God's going to give you a Rolls Royce. <laughs> and I think he's got ants in his pants because he keeps <laughs> like this, man, you know. And I'm sitting there, I'm just getting, I, you know, like if I had a gun, I would blow the TV apart. I, seriously, I told Shelly, never put a gun in my house. We're going to TV's first thing to go. Next to those people who phone and say, would you like your duck works clean? <laughs> I want you to know something. Spiritual discernment. Okay? Number one. Preachers should not drive Rolls Royces. Amen. Preachers should drive Bentleys. <laughs> Rolls Royces are for old men. Bentleys are for Jesus people. <laughs> All of you clapped. I need you to financially help me. Okay. I'll know. <laughs> Bible says that we should take care of the widows, the orphan, the needy, the poor. Yes. Not make ourselves filthy rich. Amen. Spiritual discernment. Now, it's not bad to be rich. I know a lot of Christians who are born again who are rich, and they are my friends. And if we don't get the 40,000 today to more, we're having lunch with them. But I want you to know something. Spiritual discernment is where I bring the thoughts, the arguments on the captivity of Christ, and then Christ gives me his thoughts. His thoughts. Jesus said in Gethsemane, not my will, but your will. Not my way, your way. There's some of us in this room, we're asking for miracles, and God will never give you that miracle because one, it's not biblical, and number two, it's not his will. I've asked God many times, would you take away these glasses? And he hasn't done it. Now, am I going to keep doing it? I'm going to keep talking to him about it. But at the end of the prayer, I always put, but your will be done. You're watching The Truth. Have you ever had questions understanding the Bible? We all have. Well, we're here to help. Each Sunday, The Truth TV aims to reveal God's truth in your life. Join Pastor Billy Richards Sunday mornings as he teaches biblical messages that have an application designed for you. So we invite you to join us right here on this station for The Truth TV, revealing God's truth in your life. Number three, let me take you this. This is so exciting, spiritual faith and obedience. Jesus turned and saw her, Matthew 9, 22. Take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. No, shouldn't he said, I healed you through your faith? No, he said, your faith has healed you. Matthew 9, 28. Verse 29, let's do 29 on Matthew 9. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done. And their sight was restored. Your faith. Did you hear this? Your faith. Matthew 15. Let's go to verse 27. Yes, it is, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs 
that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith, your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. Woman, you have great faith, your request is granted. Woman, you have great faith. Did you hear this? Your request, did you hear this? Did you hear this? Your faith, oh, Matthew 13, 58, and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Here's the application, five things I give to you real quick, okay, real quick. Number one, Father God wants to bless you more than you want blessing. Did you hear that? Father God wants to bless you more than you want blessing. Now, I know you want blessing, okay? You'd be a fool not to. Do you know that God wants to bless you more than you want blessing? He gave his son. He's given you the Holy Spirit. The fact is this, that some of us do not understand this. When I wake up in the morning, I am walking in the blessing of God, and I am not only expecting it, but I am reverently thanking him. My feet were made to be blessed. My hands were made to be blessed. My brain was made to be blessed. My words were supposed to be made to be blessed, and I blow it so many times. Number two, <laughs> evil wants to curse you more than you want blessing. And you say to me, that's rude. No, it's not. I see so many people who can get a miracle through Jesus and they are letting evil stand in their way. I see so many people who could have an incredible miracle in their family, but they refuse to give Jesus lordship. And some of us, we talk the talk and we walk the walk and we look that, but we know right in our heart that we are not righteous in God. Man comes in my office a few years ago with his wife. He says to me, he says, we, we've been praying for a miracle for years. We've never got it. And I looked at him and I said, sir, I'm sorry to tell you this. There's something in your life that's holding you back. Can you please tell us what it is? He looked at me and he says, how dare you say that? Six months later, he comes in my office with his wife to confess. She found pornography on his computer. And I looked at him and said, hello. The fact is that when are we going to pull our socks up and start to do spiritual warfare? I come against the powers of darkness, the principalities of evil, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I mean, parents, if you're not pleading the blood of Jesus over your children, I don't care if they're at home or they've grown up, every day you're not parenting right. My mother made my life terrible when I wasn't serving the Lord. I just, honestly, it, it, it was not worth being a sinner with my mother around. I would go out and I wanted to party hardy and she'd be at home. I come against all the powers of darkness that Billy's going to come against tonight. In the name of Jesus, we bind it. We, I come home, she said, how was your night? And I said, you know how it was, you blew it. I go up to my bedroom. She goes, there's room at the cross for you. You know, thank you, Mother. She made my life miserable. She says, there's only one way, Jesus, as long as I'm alive. She lived to be 95. Visit our new website. Log on to www.thechurch.to to make online donations, view sermon videos, and get event news at Church on the Queensway. You know, can I just share this with you? Number four. Three, find God's will. You know his will is better than your will. Number four, the Holy Spirit wants to give you faith for the miracle. See, what he wants to do is he wants to take that little mustard seed of faith you have and he wants to make it grow. All week I've had the power of hell coming against me. I'm in Los Angeles, California. After school I would go out into the parking lot of the hotel. The people in the hotel just thought it was really funny because I just walked up and down. It was 150 yards up and down the back parking lot of the hotel. 
And I walked there, and I kept walking, I kept walking, kept walking, just praying for today. You wouldn't believe how many thoughts came in my head. God's not going to move, God's not going to, people aren't going to show up, it's summer, you're crazy. All these thoughts came in, and the more I prayed, the more I started gaining faith. And as I'm walking in the hotel parking lot this week in L.A., I'm walking up and down, like a, and, and my hands are up. I couldn't care less what people in L.A. think. They're all crazy anyways. And the more I prayed, the more faith, and honestly, if I could tell you what Jesus wants to do today. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of the parking lot, and I'm praying, and it's dark, in the parking lot, and I'm raising my hands, and I'm saying, Jesus, let it come. Let it come. And, and the more you pray, Jesus says, the reason these things do not happen in your life, he said to the disciple, is you do not pray and you do not fast. The last one I give to you today is this, and then we're going to pray. Use your faith. Use your faith. Use your faith. How do I know when I have faith? Well, you already have faith. Just use it. It's not a question of how do I know when I have it. You have it. Use it. Use it. Thank you so much for watching The Truth. I want to show you something that's changed my life. I have a very close friend in Montreal. His name is Claude Hood has the largest church in Quebec. It's incredibly large. It's over 4,000 people attend every Sunday. He just finished writing a book called Increase Your Faith. And this book has really changed my life. And what I want to do is ask you if you could help support the program today, The Truth. Now, if you financially can't, don't worry about it. But if you can help us today by sending us a donation of $25 or more, what we want to do is send you this book free by Claude Hood, Increase Our Faith. Now, let me just share this with you. This book has really changed my life. But the second thing I'm asking for is if you could help us financially because we believe the program is changing lives also. So here, here's the deal. If you phone us and the lines are busy, that means all our prayer counselors and our phone counselors are, are on the lines. Keep phoning until you get through. Or phone us during the week when the office hours are from 8.30 to 4.30 Toronto time. The second thing I want to say is this. If you want to go online and donate, you can. When you go online to donate, make sure you mention in your donation, Increase Our Faith or the Truth television program. Hey, listen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Remember one major thing, one major thing out of everything. Jesus loves you. Jesus is not a religion. He is a relationship. And Jesus loves you with all his heart. Second thing I want you to know is we at Church on the Queensway would love you to come and visit us on a Sunday. We would love you to be part of us. Matter of fact, after service, please come up and introduce yourself to us. As I travel across Canada and the United States, people are always coming up saying, your show touched my heart. By the way, I just want you to know, we love you very much. God bless you. See you next week. Church on the Queensway. A great place for everyone. Invite you to join us on Sundays for our traditional service at 9.30 a.m. You can also join us for our non-traditional service each Sunday morning at 11.11 a.m. And if you're looking for somewhere to go Sunday nights, join us at 6 p.m. in the chapel. That's not at all. Friday nights is our family night, and it all gets started at 7.30 p.m. each Friday night. If you need more information, check out our website for sermon videos, online donations, and more at www.thechurch.to.